starting with you and already results, kind of the market's attention rightly focused in on uh, corporate profitability. Computer share, though, things looking a bit wobbly. We have seen computer shares results come out and if we have a look at the underlying expectations, the company's own guidance was for underlying earnings per share growth of between 10 to 15 percent. We've actually seen underlying earnings per share growth of 12 percent, so coming in pretty much right in the middle of those uh, that guidance. If we have a look at computer share, it is a global share registry. There's, um, there's over 12,000 corporates on its books, over 20 countries and over five continents. So really this is a business that is leveraged to market activity. If we have a look at the key drivers of this business, it's market activity, corporate activity, as well as the Aussie dollar because of the amount of revenue it sources from offshore. And those three things have really been a negative for its business. But it is, uh, I guess, a bounce back in market activity which will help this stock. And that's the reason why investors get into a company like this. So the outlook is very important as well. And the company is saying that they're well placed for an improvement in the market, but they're really not significantly banking on that in FY13. Team. But altogether, it does look like the market getting behind these results. We're seeing computer shares online with a rise of more than 5%. And really, the outlook for the market is looking a little bit brighter as investors and traders shift their assets from some of the defensive areas into uh, equities. So it does look like there's more of an interest in equities this week. And I think that bodes well for computer share. Its result really coming in line with expectation. Uh, coffee results, not what you've been drinking this morning, but uh, <laughs> another entity uh, already. Look at that share price. It does look like coffee, getting a little bit of a lift today and that's good news because in the past what we have seen from this company is of course uh, earnings downgrades coming through or expectations. Um, the forecast being downgraded and of course write downs in this business as well. We have a look at their latest guidance which was back in April. It was for EBITDA of uh, 39 to 41 million dollars. Now that was a downgrade previously they were forecasting 45 million dollars. They have come in on the lower end of those expectations coming in at uh, 30 39.7 million dollars but altogether if we have a look at this business they are an engineering consulting business in the geoscience area as well as the environmental area and the mining services area and it has been a difficult time so I guess a bit of a transformational time for Coffee International. Investors in this stock will be hoping that some of the bad news is behind them. Today it does look like the fact that they've come in on expectations which were relatively low has been enough to buoy the stock today so the stock with a rise. If you've kind of got half an eye towards China as we all should, eighth of the eighth we are today, are we not? I mean that is a lucky number for a release. The stock is up over 7%. We just showed the line. It was whoom, up she goes. So that was just a, a nice one uh, to see. But Rio, I guess now in frame two. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Rio certainly in frame. Julia, what are your expectations for this first half result? And, and do you think that the increase in production that we have seen in the current financial year is enough to boost come 2013? Well, we have seen production relatively strong, although in the last uh, quarterly production results, iron ore was a little bit softer than what we were expecting. But I guess the real problem with these material companies is that we have seen commodity prices under pressure at a time when costs have been rising. So actually yesterday we saw Extrata's result and that tells us a lot about what we can expect from the material space. We saw Extrata coming out with a profit which was down by 33%. And I guess one of the things that the market had been watching was capital expenditure and it cut its capital expenditure for 2000 12 by $1 billion. So if we have a look at this result, some of the things to keep in mind is that the reported headline number for Rio Tinto is going to be very different from the underlying number. So it is important to look at the underlying number when it comes out at 5 p.m. today. Now that's because of a few uh, differences. One is uh, we're probably going to see quite a substantial amount in a tax deferred asset, which is related to the MRRT coming online and also a disposal of assets as well. So if we have a look at the underlying expectations, we're actually uh, a little bit ahead of consensus. We're expecting to see a profit result of $5.07 billion. That would still be down 35% uh, from uh, year on year. But the consensus of the market is $4.94 billion. And if we have a look at some of the things to watch out for, well, we know that Rio Tinto capital expenditure uh, for 2012 is at about $16 billion. So we're going to be watching to see whether or not that 
markets cut. We're also watching asset sales. We know they're trying to get rid of their diamond business, and the market's also going to be watching for commentary around their Pacific aluminium business mm -hmm. and whether there's any plans to dispose of that asset um, as well. And of course, cost pressures. Any mm -hmm. signs of cost pressures will make the market a little bit jittery, and of course, the outlook given the situation in terms of global growth. So, a lot to watch out for in terms of Rio Tinto coming out with a half year result, probably at about 5 p.m. once the market's closed. Yeah, today. and it's got to be said, sales as much as profits, because you can kind of move things off balance sheet, or you can you can even pay your staff or mothball to get the profit up. But if the underlying demand for this business is showing signs of waning, surely that must be a red flag being hoist. And I guess that's reflected in commodity prices at the moment. The fact that we have seen weakness in commodity prices is a negative for these type of companies. We know that costs have been rising, so a double negative there. And the Aussie dollar is still relatively strong there. If we have a look at last year's half-year number, it was $7.78 billion. Now, if we have a look at consensus, it's just under that $5 billion mark. So a significant fall there. We're looking at a fall of more than 30% in terms of underlying profit. So that material space is going to be one soft area of the market uh, in terms of reporting season. Market expectations are for a drop in earnings of around about 17%. And of course, Rio Tinto is the first big one off the boat coming out with its half year result. It is going to be a big one for other stocks in this space. And of course, we know that the market's going to be watching just to see what the effects of those rising costs have been given the weakness that we are seeing in commodity prices. And as you mentioned, Carsten, that's just a reflection of the softness in demand.